fellow gear jammers. Today, I'm going to talk about the history of the towing industry and how it got started. Since I have a video on the rotator tow truck, this is going to be sort of a prequel to the rotator tow truck video. If you haven't already viewed my video on the rotator tow truck, I've got a link down in the description below that will take you directly to the video. I am sure that you will enjoy seeing it. Also, please take a quick moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. Today, I'm going to talk about the Neo Scale Models White Road Boss with Holmes Twin Boom Wrecker Bed in 164 scale. But before I start talking about the model, I thought a brief history of the towing industry would be interesting. The towing industry started long before the automobile was even invented. Wagons and carts often got stuck in the mud or sand and had to be towed out by oxen, donkeys, mules, or horses. Moving ahead to the era of the automobile and trucks. Draft animals were used to help recover and tow automobiles and trucks when they had a mishap. The year was 1916. A tin Lizzie crashed into a Tennessee Creek. This mishap presented a difficult recovery. The owner of the car was a friend of a man named Ernest Holmes Sr. And Ernest Holmes Sr. was called to help pull his friend's car out from a creek. Holmes knew the owner of a nearby service station and the man sent a crew of men out to work on the recovery. It took eight men to recover the car. Using only wood, bricks, rope, and a whole lot of manpower, this group of men spent several hours recovering the vehicle. After the vehicle was recovered, Holmes thought that there had to be a better way. So, Holmes set about finding a better way to recover vehicles. His first efforts, well, they failed. But Holmes didn't give up. After several more failures, Holmes created a successful design and he patented the equipment in 1917. By 1919, Holmes had developed a viable machine. The first tow truck. It was a Holmes 485 and it was completed in 1919. But considering all the time and effort it saved, it quickly paid for itself. The tow industry was started. The design was created with outriggers to support the tow vehicle while picking up the load. Holmes' first wrecker was attached to a 1913 locomobile. The Holmes 485 became the first tow truck or wrecker, and its design is still apparent in today's modern tow trucks. The basis for Ernest Holmes Sr.'s patents was the unique concept of having a split boom wrecker that could anchor the truck on one side and retrieve the vehicle from the other side without tilting the wrecker. Ernest Holmes' successful wrecker led him to found the Ernest Holmes Company in Chattanooga, Tennessee on Market Street and was its president until his death in 1945. Inventing the tow truck wasn't the only towing industry milestone for the Holmes family. Holmes's grandsons, Gerald Holmes and Bill Holmes, developed and built hydraulic towing equipment now used universally in the industry. The family operated the business until 1973 and they sold the business to the Dover Corporation for $64 million. Today we have all sorts of wreckers and recovery vehicles from small old-fashioned tow trucks to flatbeds to huge rotator trucks but they employ many of Holmes Sr. and his grandson's designs. And this is the 1977 white road boss tow truck. It is an Ernest Holmes, looks like a 750 bed, but it is an Ernest Holmes twin boom bed. And it's on that 1977 white road boss cab and chassis tandem axle that Neo scale models made. It's a resin cab, resin bed mounted on a die cast frame. 
it comes in their standard Neo Scale Models box, which is the hardboard sleeve, black plastic base, clear plastic display lid to keep all that dust off, and it has the uh, mirror piece in the back so you can see the passenger side pretty nice. They do a great job on their trucks. Underneath you can see it is White Road Boss Neo 164 and it's item number Neo 64025 and there's its a European EAN 13 number. They're equivalent to our um, barcode, the UPC. And it is a really nice truck. Now we'll go on and take him out so you can actually see what he looks like. And there it is off the base plate. Now go on and pick him up so you can really look at it. They did an amazing job. I kind of think it's sitting a little far back from the cab, especially with where they put those mufflers. But that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it up on top of this truck you can see it doesn't really have chrome plated parts it has silver parts well they would have been aluminum parts on the real trucks so painting them an aluminum color actually is more typical than the real trucks and chrome plating that like dcp and first gear do you have your twin stacks right there mufflers with little uh, heat shield is actually molded into the muffler and then there's the tailpipe fuel tank over here, 10 hole bud wheels up front, and five spoke spiders on the rear, aluminums up front, painted aluminum with red center caps, their uh, silver rims, and silver spokes on the rear with um, red center caps, pretty sharp. It has its toolbox there, this door opens so that it could swing out, but it doesn't really open. Neither does the toolbox, they're all fixed. Other toolboxes, uh, marker light there, and up here you can see it's got a marker light. This is a long hood white road boss. There's your battery box, and then there is your um, air cleaner on this truck. No, 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 oil filter on this truck. Great big oil filter. Air cleaner's on the other side, and it's a square box style. Mirrors are resin, so is that part and these parts. Most of your ancillary parts are resin pieces. Door handle and grab bars included. They replicated the hinge detail very well. It's got a beautiful dark red with a black striping on it and then gold pin striping. Up here it has a white and road boss. Now that is a little photo etched metal piece. Very easy to flip off but being such a flat spot, it probably won't ever come off on you. Round towards the front here. Great big white grill. You can see it has a photo etched grill insert on both sides. A little black trim there and white is embossed into the resin piece. They actually tampoed the white lettering with a little bit of black really really nice has two driving lights hanging down below the bumper a big straight bumper with plenty of detail the headlights and the driving lights are individual jewel style pieces and then they have the aluminum bezels right here around those headlights license plate down here is an Oklahoma commercial plate pretty nice they also put your handle here so you can pull that hood over easily did a great job. Tip him up just a hair. We can see the top of the hood. You can see where it has black striping, two thin ones and a big wide one down the center. And then there is your windshield wipers and they are individual photo etched pieces. Pretty nice. Be careful, you can flick them right off easily. The windshields are uh, vacuum formed windows with black trim around for the gasket and a black bar in the center to make it a two piece. Inside the cab there is two seats, they're big high back bucket seats, black steering wheel and black dashboard. The rest of the detail inside is black. You can see air horns, both mirrors this way, really nice. Side windows are also 
vacuum formed and they have a black ring around it and then a silver bar to mark off where the wind wing would be. Pretty cool. It's all one piece, but it looks like it's got two there. Passenger side here, as we're seeing, bigger fuel tank because it doesn't have the battery box here. Bigger fuel tank with steps on it. Uh, stack, hand grab bar, door handle, mirror, a white style goofy looking air filter box. I don't know where they came up with that, but they did it. Individual part uh, turn signal here, which is just a little resin part painted with some uh, orange paint. Well, real light, clear yellow paint instead of bright orange like it should be. Then you can see the toolbox and the door that opens up for the home's bed. And then over here you can see another marker light. Same five spoke Dayton's in the rear and 10 hole aluminum's up front. Around to the back. Now this is where this truck kind of starts to really shine. Back here you can see another Oklahoma plate. It's got Holmes EA with the logo for the Holmes Wrecker bed on both mud flaps. Two little uh, stands that come down so that they could um, stabilize the truck. Brake lights on both sides which are painted in. It's got the uh, angled bumper where they got the two angles on it and then the big bumper back here with uh, black paint for chevrons to make it uh, look like it's there uh, to make it look like the real ones then you have this little piece here which is the piece that would fold down and brace the truck away from the tow truck when it's on the hook now it doesn't fold down it's fixed just the way it is and the hooks best you can really hope for with the hooks is that they'll actually hook on this they don't come down go out like the DCPs but this is a different style tow truck so we need different style tow trucks than what has been done by everybody else in our collections so I won't complain in transport they would probably have those hooked right here just to hold them in place then you can see the twin booms but the, the booms don't split apart be nice if they did but they don't I understand why they didn't it's resin so I'm not going to complain but normally if they were winching with this truck they would pull this like say they're pulling something up over here they pull this over this the uh, right boom would be pulled over and anchored to a tree or something and then they would be winching with the left boom and vice versa depending on which side they were pulling from Uh, back to the brake lights. They are actually four little individual jewel style pieces. Really nice. Painted red. Now we'll go up on top here so that you can see the rest of the wrecker bed. You can see how there's the two booms and these two booms would be split and they could work this one or that one depending on what they needed to do. There is spotlights up there and then there is a um, roof beacon which would have been a rotating beacon light in the 70s and it is painted orange for visibility then back here you can see the two winches that would run the cables really nice detail now they don't winch they don't work they are just static pieces this is a total static display nothing actually works on it but I'm not gonna complain you see the top of the toolbox the diamond pad the diamond plate steel that's there and they've got it painted aluminum color instead of chrome plated. I like this better than the chrome plated that most people would have done. I really like this. And then your boom set is all painted in black to replicate that Holmes bed. Let's go underneath and pretty cool. You have your full detailed underneath, air tanks here, you can see the exhaust coming out and going to the tailpipes on both sides. Bottom of the transmission and engine detail. There's a drive shaft that goes from the transmission to the first axle and then from the first axle to the second axle. Torsion bar suspension, heavy differentials. And then it says 164 White Road Boss, 1977 tampoed on that frame rail. Neo Scale Models tampoed on that one. Spring front suspension. Steering tie rod, axle, and made in China embossed into the front axle. Now it doesn't steer, 
but I'm not going to complain. I like it because I like the vintage trucks. There's the battery box and then the tool, the two fuel tanks. You can see how the passenger side is much bigger than the driver's side. Also, they did a really nice uh, replication of the vintage tread pattern on the rear duals and the front singles. Pretty cool, making a 70s truck. Now, since those hooks don't really work, I can't really show it off with a truck hooked up, but I can show it off with a truck behind it. And he's there picking up that truck that broke down. Figure it that way. That's what he's up to, is just picking up a broken truck. And that is the 1977 White Road Boss with Holmes, looks like 750 twin boom wrecker bed tandem axle in red and black about ready to hook on to a advantage die cast Chevrolet Titan 90 COE the 1973 Titan although tow trucks have changed a lot since the Holmes 485 the tow truck industry has remained basically the same their mission to recover disabled vehicles and keep the country's highways clear and safe remains current and necessary. For those of you that are new here, I sell these models on my website and you can find a link to my site in the description below. They are only available in limited quantities, so once they are gone, they are gone. Neo Scale Models made resin models and to better explain why you should have resin models in your collection, please go on and get my free report on Diecast versus resin with another link in the description below. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, asking you to please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.